In this video, we're going to continue our discussion of how to populate an autocomplete text view. We are now on the step where we're creating an interface and a stub. A stub is a concept of basically a prototype of a program, uh, something that you can create to simulate what a program will do or a part of a program. And then we're going to make an interface out of that. That interface and stub allow us to work in parallel. Let's say we have five people working on something. The five people can create an interface and then a stub that mocks the eventual behavior that we will see. The five people can trade their interfaces and stubs and they can work together with the interface being a contract that ties each person's software or module to another person's software or module. Meanwhile, while we're all working against this stub, uh, we can continue to build the actual implementation class. And when the implementation class is ready, that implementation class will also extend the interface that the stub, inter that the stub implements. And so we can simply remove the stub and replace it with the actual implementation. So let's think of the stub as a prototype. Now, just as we did in our last video, uh, we want to make a special package for our, uh, this is going to be a DAO or a data access object. We want to create a special package so we can keep them all together and keep them organized. So I right click on the Java folder and I choose new package and I'm going to keep the same uh, sub package. So nw15s305, make sure I spelled that right, dot plant places, dot com, dot dao. So you see the sub package here is dao, where the nw15s305.plantplaces.com is the same as the other packages that we have. I choose OK. OK. Uh, now what I'm going to do is right click and say new, and I'm going to say Java class. And this is going to be our, let's say, plant DAO. Uh, the idea is, uh, actually we'll call it plant DAO stub. The idea is this is going to simulate going out over a network and accessing plant data. So uh, let me make a method. And the method's going to say public. And then we'll say, well, what do we want to return? Let's say uh, list. And then that list is going to have a generic identifier. Now we need to be careful with this. A list is a collection of data. And with a list, we have to give it a generic identifier. That generic identifier says, this is what we're storing in that list. It's really tempting to say, let's just return a list of strings. But if you're doing that, you're not doing things in a very object-oriented way. Instead, we want to return a list of these plant DTOs. So I'm going to say public list plant DTO, and then we'll say fetch plants, and we'll say string uh, search term. So the search term might be, a um, search term is, is, is redbud or oak or maple or whatever we're using to search these plants. Okay, open curly and close curly, and it tells me it doesn't know who plant DAO is. Uh, we need to import that. So I'll put my cursor on plant DAO, hold alt, and choose enter. And that will take care of the import for plant DAO. Need to do the same thing for list, so I move my cursor to list, hold alt, press enter, and import list. Okay, now what do we do? Well, what we need to do is declare our return type. Now, list is actually a, uh, an interface. So an interface can be used as a variable type, but not an object type. So I'll say list D, uh, plant DTO, all plants equals new array list okay now array list array list is a class that implements list I'll enter to get that imported okay uh, so I have the object type on the right and the variable type on the left uh, the variable type can be an interface the object type is a class that implements that interface now I'm going to say return return value. We'll go ahead and put the first and the last line in. We can fill the rest in in just a moment. Return all plants. Okay, and save. Now we at least have something that compiles. Now what I need to do is populate the list of all plants with a hard-coded known set of items. Or set of plants if you want. Okay, 
Let me make a little more room here. Okay. And so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to say plant DTO. We'll say uh, Eastern Redbud equals new plant DTO. So creating a new object of this DTO. Then I'm going to say Eastern Redbud. That's set genus, uh, Circus. And then Eastern Redbud. That's set species. And we're going to say Canadensis. Uh, no cultivar in this one, so we'll say Eastern Redbud. That's set common. And we're going to say Eastern Redbud. Uh, the fact that the common name is the same as the variable name is just so that uh, the variable name is self-documenting or self-descriptive. A uh, variable name could be anything that we want. Finally, let's add the Eastern Redbud to our collection. Okay, so all plants dot add. Let's say Eastern Redbud. Okay, let's make one more plant. Uh, we're going to say plant DTO Chinese Redbud uh, equals new plant DTO. And then we're going to say Chinese Redbud dot set genus uh, Circus. Okay, uh, Chinese Redbud. Set species, and we're going to say Chinensis, Chinensis, and then Chinese redbud, set common, Chinese redbud. Okay, and again, all plants dot add. Chinese redbud. Okay, let's do one more, this time one with a cultivar. I'm going to say plant DTO. Uh, we're going to say lavender twist redbud equals new plant DTO. So you see we've made three objects of the same class. And then we're going to say lavender, lavender twist redbud, set genus. And we're going to say circus, lavender twist redbud. Dot set species, and we're going to say Canadensis. Lavender twist redbud. Dot set cultivar. Uh, lavender twist. And then finally, lavender twist redbud. Set common name. Lavender twist. Okay, and all plants dot add lavender twist okay at this point our stub is ready and this would be the results we would expect if we searched on redbud uh, we're not actually checking to see if we searched on redbud we're simply returning three redbuds if we wanted we could wrap an if test around this and specify hey only return this if we're searching on redbud but uh, we'll let that go for the moment uh, we can maybe handle that at a later time if we desire now, one thing that we want is an interface, and the interface is very important because uh, interface can be a variable type. Remember that. This is an interface, and it's a variable type, and this is a variable name. This is the class that implements that interface. The only rule we have here is that if the variable is an interface type, the class must implement that interface. Now, one interface can be implemented by multiple classes. This can be one of the classes, and this is our hard-coded stub. The actual working implementation can be another class that also implements the same interface. So we want to make an interface that this plant DAO stub and the actual implementation will both implement. A lot of people think this is extra work, but it's really not that bad. What I'm going to do is I'm going to right-click, and I'm going to choose Refactor, and I'm going to choose Extract. And I'm going to choose interface, and we're simply going to call this one iPlant DAO. Okay, and uh, uh, members to form the interface, so go ahead and select the method that we've created, and I'll choose refactor. Okay, uh, just go ahead and choose yes.
Okay, and yes. Now see what that did is that added this implements line right here. Plant stub DAO implements I plant DAO. So it sets up this relationship between the stub and the interface. Uh, what I can do, I'm going to work just a slight step ahead right now. I'm going to go to the DAO package, right click on new, choose class, and let's pretend that we're making the actual implementation. So I'm going to say plant DAO, and I'm going to choose OK. And then I'm, and right now we just have an empty class. And I'm going to say implements I plant DAO. Now watch what happens as soon as I do this. You see, as soon as I add that implementation, we get a red line. So fix it with an alt enter, implement methods. Choose our method, and it puts in a default method. Eventually, we'll make this actually do some work for us. But by implementing the interface iPlantDAO, which says define the method called fetch plants, we are under contract to have that method in every class that implements iPlantDAO. iPlantDAO stub, there we go, uh, fetch plants, plant DAO, and once again, the same method fetch plants. The reason why that is, is it uh, goes back to the reason why this all works. The variable type defines the methods that we are allowed to call. So an interface can be a variable type. Remember I said that a few moments ago, an interface can be a variable type because the variable type defines the methods we are allowed to call. The object type has to be a class, it can't be an interface because the object type defines what will happen when we call that method. Currently nothing in, a, in plant DAO, but currently it will return three red buds in plant DAO stub. So that's the concept of polymorphism in object-oriented program, programming. The variable type only tells you what methods you're allowed to call, and the object type tells you what will happen when you call those methods. And that's what we see set up here. So that's enough for this video, but in uh, future videos, we are going to uh, create our async task based on this stub. Once we've created the async task, we're going to go back to that plant DAO, the empty class that we just created, and we're going to have it coordinate with the network DAO to make a network call, and also we're going to have it parse some JSON. So we're well on our way to finishing up this example, and I look forward to seeing you in our next video where we do create that async task. Thank you.